to begin the day, let me inform all of you and listen to me very carefully. We have on board Mr. Amit J. Swani and Mr. Neil Behel, who are going to put forth their views on the topic, investing in old economy versus new age businesses from the lens of new age fund managers. Let me introduce our eminent panelists, ladies and gentlemen. We have Mr. Amit J. Swani, who is the founder of Stallion Asset. He is a double charter and has successfully completed his chartered financial analyst from Virginia, USA and chartered market technician from New York, USA. He has been investing in capital markets from the last 14 years. He's an active member with the Association of Technical Market Analysts and Indian Association of Investment Professionals. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, now we also have with us Mr. Neil Behel, as I said, and Nijan Capital was founded by Mr. Neil Behel in June 2007. Nijan Capital has vast exposure to capital market dealings and directors of Nijan Capital have been investors for more than two decades and have good experience in research and analytical processes. Nijan Capital forayed into portfolio management services in 2017 and Nijan Capital follows a focused investment strategy on special situations and technology investments. Ladies and gentlemen, those are our two eminent panelists and this session will be moderated by Mr. Sankal Popal, who takes care of business development at PMS AIF World. He is an MBA in finance, BSc in statistics and has more than six years of experience where he has worked in various roles with different wealth management companies. A very warm welcome to our esteemed panelists, Mr. Amit J. Swani, Mr. Neil Behel and Mr. Sankal Popal, our moderator. Mr. Sankal Po, it's over to you now. Thank you, Ashwarya. Welcome, Amit. Welcome, Neil. So I'll take just one minute to thank all our, uh, you know, associate partners uh, for helping us uh, put this show. My team that is working very hard in the background to put this show. Uh, also to the ever, uh, you know, loving audience that we uh, so hard, uh, we, we work so hard for, for all your support across all our, uh, you know, work, all our media channels, YouTube, Twitter, everywhere. Thank you so much. So, uh, you know, uh, Aishwarya spoke about cricket and let me tell you, uh, we are opening the day today. So I, I think of you as uh, Sachin and Sehwag opening for India and me as Shoaib Akhtar opening the polling for uh, Pakistan. So that's how I look at it. And, uh, you know, I'm sure it will be, you will, you will have some very beautiful insights and it will be like watching Tendulkar at play and Seva hitting uh, the ball hard. Uh, so, you know, yesterday uh, when I was discussing this with my dad, uh, my dad told me this quote. He said that uh, youth is not a guarantee for innovation and uh, age is not a guarantee for uh, wisdom. So, you know, it's, uh, I was told I ho I'm hosting this panel and, you know, it struck to me uh, that this is very relevant. And uh, with that context, let me uh, set the tone. Today, we're looking at uh, new age businesses primarily and also how, uh, you know, fund managers, young fund managers like Neil and Amit are changing the way money management uh, is, is looked at in India. So uh, we'll understand from you, uh, you know, maybe Amit can start and then Neil can take over. Uh, what do you understand by a new age business and 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 and, a, and and some something as an old economy business? What is your understanding and how do you look at them uh, when you do your allocation strategy? So what do you, Amit? We can have you answer that and then Neil, you can take over. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Sankal, for a very kind introduction. Thank you, PMS AF World, for joining uh, for uh, uh, inviting me. Thank you, everyone, who on a Saturday morning have come. Uh, and thank you more to people who've seen the NASDAQ last night, till late last night, uh, and have joined uh, this, uh, uh, this webinar. Uh, uh, so, uh, coming to, uh, so coming to the question, uh, what's the difference between new age and old age businesses? Uh, see, I'll give you an example, uh, and this is how I would see it. So, advertisement industry is a 100-year-old industry, and the largest component in 1920s, 30s of advertisement business was radio. That moved uh, later on to print and radio. These were basically until 1990s, they were the dominant force of advertisement and then uh, of advertisement in the country and the world. And then came television, right? A television in 1990s was new age, right? And people did make their money on Z entertainment it was called the TMT bubble that time. Uh, but television became 50% of the market, right? You could segment that if, I, if you want to target to the kids, 
uh, you will probably uh, do on cartoon network if you want to target the uh, the women who make buying decisions you'll go and buy it probably buy ads on star plus uh, this game changed after 2013 when internet came right and digital market share as a total advertisement market share 2013 was 3% right that is moved to now about 35 40% so india's total advertisement market is 10 billion dollars today it's 73000 crores digital was 3% and uh, and then, then so so basically at some point radio was old age uh, became old age print who reads a newspaper but what typically happens on calpure is the old age businesses also pivot to the new age businesses so in economic times will pivot to uh, coming online a uh, bloomberg so all these old age businesses also pivot so now example if shark tank is a popular show on sony tv uh, they will also show it on a digital platform like uh, youtube and all these things so the old businesses need to pivot to being the new businesses and money would be made if the old businesses can pivot the in both ways right uh, and this happened across the industry uh, so that is what new age and so the entertainment the, the, as a category remains the same uh, but the ways and mediums keep changing to provide that uh, whole uh, thing like that and it all goes to how much time are you spending on uh, that thing if you look if you buy a billboard uh, on a street of bombay you see that the number of people that will pass through that billboard and today the amount of time i spent on uh, let's say a television is 30 minutes the amount of time i spend on a mobile phone is 7 8 hours right uh, so that is the time the more bigger that screen time goes uh the bigger the industry becomes that side of industry and there you have market leaders and of course uh, you need to see the competition and then uh, then that's basically the difference between the new age and the old age right so essentially the way you are interacting or engaging with your customers is new age to you very very interesting uh, neil over to you what is your understanding of uh, new age businesses and how are you looking at them so you know we i have similar thoughts to amit on this matter what we look at is not you know old age or new age we look at which sectors are actually adopting technology which sectors are actually you know where internet is coming and kissing them for to say and they are you know changing their you know unit economics they changing their structural growth so you know for example you know we for us a new age economy we would look at the qsr space the quick service restaurants you know till date i mean till until a few years ago a restaurant business was supposed to be a very bad business people would have to come to a restaurant and eat so these people used to have big restaurants and you know it was a very bad on unit economics while the opportunity size was good <clears throat> the total addressable market was very big but the unit economics were never good but then came technology into play uh, then came the rise of internet and then once the pandemic happened all of us were forced to adopt technology indians for example were forced to for the first time use upi you know i myself had not used upi uh, gpay till uh, 2020 so once we ended up using technology for the first time that changed everything and now consum- cu- consumers customers everybody has changed so whichever sectors of the economy are now, you know connected in a big way with technology i would consider them to be a new age business so technology is a key uh, key play and internet is a more more important thing for example you know coming back to the qsr now qsr is nothing like a normal restaurant business qsr is dependent on the internet so this new like supposing now you and i today we want to watch a match we want to call friends over we want to do anything together so it's become a reflex action go, uh, go to zomato go to uh, swiggy order a coffee order a pizza whatever you feel like so earlier these kind of uh, you know this qsr space would rely totally on dine in customers but today more like 40 50% of the revenue is coming from the cloud from the uh, cloud kitchen and the takeaway so suddenly because of technology being involved over here these companies their unit economics have changed earlier the store level roic used to be 30% today that same has increased to 60% so while the addressable market was always big the 
underlying unit economics were not but now we have the same thing the uh, the the addressable market is huge so top line growth is going to be there but now it's going to be there with rising uh, you know return on capital so what these guys do because of the more uh, amount of technology that they are using in the business suddenly they don't need to open big stores or the big uh, restaurants anymore what they used to achieve in terms of top line with let's say a 3000 square uh, square feet uh, restaurant now they are able to do the same with the 1200 1300 square feet restaurant so suddenly the the rent outgo has reduced by 50% suddenly the furniture and fixture that you require that go in a uh, outlet has reduced by 50% the manpower that cost has reduced by 50% so the return on capital has shot up dramatically so we need to identify areas of the economy which were traditional businesses until recently but now they yeah, you know kind of adopted the internet everything is revolving around the internet and if we are able to do that we'll end up also creating that very good alpha for ourselves so for us the difference is not old age new age the difference is any business which is using technology to transform themselves is a new age business it can even be a traditional business it need not be a paytm for example it can even be a qsr it can even be a normal kfc you know like a devyani international I, for me even that is a tech company it's a quasi tech company right right thank you neil let me just give a disclaimer no stocks discussed or businesses discussed are advices here they're more for academic purpose so i've got an entire question about how the pivot happens from a more traditional brick and mortar probably to a, a qsr like more uh, asset light platform but before that let us just take couple of minutes each to you know understand uh, you know you guys are on consensus that uh, this is more a uh, you know outreach kind of a thing or how technology is implemented kind of a thing in new age businesses how does product research and innovation fit into this uh, piece you know where new companies will uh, older companies will also you know have to match in terms of r and d or in terms of product development to suit the taste so how do you think these two uh, things fit with each other couple of minutes and then we move on to the next questions amit we can start with you and then neel sorry so you said sorry so you said how does r and d and using technology no how does uh, your idea of a old old company transitioning into a new age internet or technology based business fit in with the products the product development per se no because that also has to evolve so the products as as example or well, neel gave an example of sapphire and devyani in this example i'll use the same example just for continuity purposes okay uh they didn't actually do any new r and d right all they did for last 7 8 years dominos has been working hard on creating a supply chain of getting the delivery business right okay and dominos got that right with 8 crore 8 crore app downloads and everything and building a delivery infrastructure uh, zomato came in 3 4 years back <coughs> billy came in 3 4 years back and suddenly uh, they they uh, suddenly companies like devyani like i'll give you an example uh, Uh, the pizza hut delivery revenue used to be 10% 15% now it is 65% delivery revenue it does an average revenue per a store of 47000 at devyani uh, uh, which basically is now 65000 uh, 65% of that is delivery so there is no new product innovation these companies are doing it's just that the channel has changed and uh, because of the change of channel they don't need large stores and the unit economics have improved in this example uh is there a large product change which i am seeing in the market no when you look at a music industry there is no new product change uh, there is a change of uh, uh the customers listening music not on their tvs or uh, 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 no radios only but also and uh, also on their phones basically just by streaming their music things so the products don't change uh think about it last 20 30 years the even amazon didn't change the product he just made it convenient for you to buy you don't have to go to the store i'll come and deliver to you yeah. uh, so broadly except the mobile phone there has been no large product innovation in last uh, 20 years it's only right. the mode of uh delivery uh, or the way of the easier easiness of things that has changed right perfect neil any comments on that on product Yeah, yeah, I broadly agree again with what uh, Amit is saying. So, 
product on like for example coming back to what he said about music the songs are the same right they have not have to do anything about the song they just shifted from trying to sell the music to get revenue from advertising so now if you tips and saregama realize after like nearly 20 years in the business that selling music is not viable people will adopt you know at that time we used to download napster to kind of bypass uh, these guys and you know listen for free so customer customer is never going to change he's going to try to do piracy but what if thanks to the internet the internet completely changed this uh, sector so is music today is the internet story where tips and saregama for example have identified a platform like youtube downloaded i mean uploaded their entire uh, you know catalog onto youtube so now today as a customer i can make a playlist on youtube if i want to go to the gym i want to travel i can just play the playlist but whenever the playlist will play there will be a 5 second ad that's the game now in that 5 second ad youtube will earn revenue he will give 55% of the revenue to saregama or tips and for me i get the entire catalog with video for free i just have to endure a 5 second ad so everybody is a winner i am a winner youtube is a winner saregama is a winner so technology is changing the game completely from sector to sector to sector it's going and it's changing everything so there are winners and there are losers so you know we we need to identify that where can it happen without that extra r and d for example if you can identify you know areas where that kind of like heavy r and d costs and all are not required only the mode of delivery has changed that is where the best alphas could be made for uh, for investors right right right, right. that's a very fair point so uh, you know now we'll move on to more uh, styles of investment and uh, you know expectations of investors so you know i'll in my mind i have two distinct eras okay uh, the the dot com bubble uh, then gfc that that bull run and post which we have been in a structural bull run from let's say 2013 14 when a lot of has changed over the world you know uh, big economies like us has have performed there has been inflation there has been a lot of liquidity in the market different kinds of assets have come and new generation of investors and managers have come okay do you think that between these two periods of a structural bull run uh things have changed and if uh, what are you looking at what are what are managers like you looking at who've come in money, managing public money predominantly post 2014 era what are you looking at and what are the styles in uh, that you are looking at and what is the investor expectation from uh, from managers now so neil we'll have you answer that and then amit so you're saying what has changed from earlier to now in terms of expectations from manager and how managers probably look at uh, investing now so you know at the end of the day nothing much has changed uh, it's all a function of how much growth can be there how much cash flow can be there but uh, what has changed is that there is a definite edge in the market right now for people who are following trends especially emerging trends and who can kind of because of this tracking of the new things that are going on can you predict what may happen in the next 5 years or next in the 7 years for example if somebody can understand what an nft is today you know we will really properly understand the uh, the nft market or someone can understand metaverse some someone can understand how the electric vehicles key uh, uh, you know scenario is developing you can kind of put 2 plus 2 together and figure out for example which it company is going to do good with, with the boom in electric vehicles or which it company is going to be ready to kind of service the air mobility systems for example the flying car is a re- reality now flying cars are about to happen so which it companies are going to be in a position if this becomes commercially viable which of them will become you know who will be ready to take on these kind of contracts so as investors we need to know what has changed is that there's an edge because a lot of people are paying attention and a lot of people are not paying attention a lot of people have written off technology completely saying that technology is nonsense stick to you know what you were doing since the last 10 15 20 years but that is the edge for people who are identifying the new trends and if you can figure out which new trends can be delivered profitably like what we spoke about music what we spoke about uh, qsr what we are you know doing in electric vehicles uh you know in the saas complex for example so if you can figure out some of these things as an investor you can end up doing good is basically the first mover advantage that has changed that is available in the market right now because things are very chaotic and developing very fast 
and if you don't pay attention to what is what new things are happening you may be at a disadvantage and but if you pay attention and if you understand how how these things are working in the in the new age and as a as an investor if you can identify which company is going to end up actually cashing out in a big way early on you could be a early adopter whether it's doing via startups or whether from the listed space but uh, you can have a big edge in the market today thank you neil uh, amit i will ask you this question in a different manner because i know you like you you like this word called hyperscalers which grow very fast and which is somewhat in continuation of neil what neil indicated trends that pick up very fast okay so what i'm going to ask you is uh, if you're okay with it how do you ensure that you know uh, you get at least some of this these trends okay uh, obviously getting all of them is slightly impossible and too much to ask for but how do you get uh some of these trends in your portfolio and uh how uh, how do you evaluate these trends is my question to you so hyperscaler happens when there's a change but wealth creation so i'll go to the older question and with the newer question right. yeah. uh largest wealth creation the value of a stock is determined by the magnitude of cash flow that company can generate and the timing of that cash flow these are the most important things large wealth creation happens when a company is a small part of a large market okay but yet a market leader i'll give you an example if 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 there's a 1 lakh crore market the company should be 3 4 5 000 crore you will not make largest money if the company is 50 60 70 percent of the market then you will have to grow with the market right you cannot grow two times three times faster than the market you have to identify that company who's a leader leaders without market leadership you cannot create wealth can grow and become from 3 4 5 percent market share to 20 percent market share 30 percent market share right uh, and every year over year it needs to grow two times three times faster than the sector there is no sector in india which is growing more than 12 percent the idea is to bet on companies who can grow uh, two times three times faster than uh, the economy uh coming to your question uh, of differences between 2014 and 2000 pre and post 2014 the difference is the game has moved to habits okay the largest value is not your assets it is customer habits customers are habitual to facebook right because of its network effect customers are habitual to search on google it's a habit which is an ip of google and that's why no one goes to bing or yahoo search customers if you can create a very large customer habit okay that is bigger than all your assets combined and all these startups are spending billions and billions of dollars around the world is not just in india around the world to make sure you're getting habits that is one part of the economy which has changed if you get and the the focus of companies have shifted from revenues and profits to lifetime value of a customer that if i get let's take an example of hul hul has 50000 crores of revenues and it has 100 crore customers that means per customer hul generates 500 rupees revenues a year hul's pat margin is 18% that means hul makes 90 rupees per customer per year for how long can hul do that and how many products does hul have to increase to make sure that arpu per customer keeps going higher so and that is the case with dmart also dmart assuming is does 25000 crores of revenue i'm just taking fy20 data it does 20 crore bill cuts that means average value per bill is 1250 rupees okay for dmart dmart's pat margin is 5% every time a customer walks in in dmart and buys a bill a buy something dmart makes 62 63 rupees now this person will buy for 10 times a year okay that means 10 12 times our mothers will go into dmart and buy it. so an average per year dmart makes 750 for that customer and if that customer stays with dmart for a very long time so that is the change in how managers and businesses are thinking and what is the cac to acquire that customer what is the cost of acquisition that is how you can pencil in every business model and that's one difference i can say about pre 2014 and now Uh, there is a massive change in the way business uh, models are getting made. They're all getting made on one thing, and that is lifetime value of a customer. Uh, um, sorry, Shankar, what was the second question? The second, uh, the second question was to understand 
probably how is uh, you know like neil said uh, you know we are looking at uh, things happening uh, you know things changing in a preemptive way okay like you talk you spoke about the the lifestyle lifetime value of a customer okay how do you preempt these things you know how does a good manager understand these trends that are happening and uh, you know how do you look at it while evaluating we'll take it quickly because we've got few other yeah, questions yeah, also yeah 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 so it all it it starts example angel broking okay uh, no position just like just saying uh, we had it uh, but that company was evolving from being a uh, a 30 paisa charging broker 40 paisa 30, 10 20 paisa brokerage charge to a 20 rupee flat brokerage business that evolution was happening and quarter over quarter this guy was basically gaining market share those are the kind of things you see for a company to go from 100 crores profit to 1000 crores profit it will have to keep growing every quarter right you don't have to be the first one in i don't I think that it's very important to be the first one. It is okay once you're very clear about the trend and then get it. But because the trends are going to be very large, you can make a lot of money. But the, trying the short term game is not right. Once you're in the trend, I can guarantee you, you don't make 1x, 2x. You end up making 10x, 20x because the trends are very powerful. So uh, it's okay to be late 20, 30%, but to get that confirmation and just go in. Right, just like a snowball effect. And yes. incidentally, Warren Buffett's biography, title bio, uh, license biography is also called Snowball. That's a very powerful thing. Uh, Neil, the next question that I'll come to you what is what we began this discussion with. Okay, the entire cycle or the entire exercise of pivoting from a new age, from a from an older kind of a business or an older kind of a product to a new style or a new way of engagement. You know, companies like Asian Paints, Bajaj Finance, DMART, okay, uh, and a lot of other maybe consumer uh, pipes or consumer steel would have done it, okay, and they would have used new channels of media marketing or uh, new new procurement styles or new outreach styles. How do you how do you evaluate this entire stage? Because a lot of companies will actually try to transition, and most of them, like uh, you know, uh, like we've seen earlier, would would not be very successful. Okay, so how do you think this this shift happens, and what are you looking at when companies make this shift? Neil, uh, maybe you can take this first, and then we'll come to Amit. So you know, everything doesn't depend on just shifting. Um, it depends on the promoters levels of engagement also uh, the you know what they are actually are they capable or not so corporate governance is a very big part of this transformation journey mm -hmm. uh, so what we are looking is for people who can think fresh and uh, we need to do a firstly a check on the person if he's fit to make this kind of journey sh shift so you know one very example very good example uh, that we like again you know not a recommendation of course we already own it uh, is, is a company called chola investment and finance so you know since the last many years they've been the normal vehicle uh, finance in bfc so very cyclical uh, kind of business ups and downs but uh, i think the promoter here in my view is the best promoter in india uh, in a very cyclical kind of uh, business he's been able to deliver a 36 percent kind of cagr over the last 10 years but now what they are doing is very interesting they are making a big foray from normal regular NBFC to fintech. Now, when somebody so capable is and so good on corporate governance makes a shift from the regular business to fintech, where the sourcing of the loans will happen completely via digital channels, and then he will use his own expertise to kind of underwrite perfectly. So these are the kind of opportunities I love. So instead of buying a company that lists at a 50 times revenue or whatever, and then they say that you will do lending, digital lending. I don't want that. I want a company which is kind of available at a very decent valuation, who's now making this change. And I, I can put my kind of uh, faith in the management and say, yeah, these guys are very competent. And when they are saying something, they end up delivering. So I would prefer to be in a uh, thing like that, where the, there'll be a complete transformation in the build, uh, business. Now it's, it's going from a normal NBFC to the FinTech. And that's what we want to do. Like, you know, even I'll take an example of the wealth uh, financial services space. Like we are in the business of financial services. We, we are doing the customer acquisition in a completely different way compared to the older people in the, the legacy people in the financial services play uh, business. So it, it's not about uh, anything else, but about how you're doing things. For example, we have zero people in the sales department, zero. 
how we look at sales we look at sales from our newsletter where we are directly engaging with the customer we are looking at uh, engaging directly on twitter so things are changing right so we want to know like you know how we are doing things we are trying to identify people in the listed space how they are changing the way of the business is being done social media has come and completely changed the way business is done on his head whatever used to work 5 years ago doesn't work in the same way today so there are lots of threats there are lots of opportunities and for people like us who are doing things in a new way we need to we we understand how we use technology and how we are gaining market share every day so if i was a listed company i would definitely bet on myself that you know this company's market cap would keep increasing so i want to find similar kind of ideas who are somebody else who are doing things differently and i can see it that these guys have a great idea and this is a clicking right and as amit said is okay if you get 20 but 30% later but if you understand that it is clicking and they are getting traction go for them right thank you neil so much amit i'll just add another thing to it uh, neil kind of indicated that he'll prefer a guy who understands probably the product of financing first and then understands technology and adopt it what will you uh, what will your stance usually be someone who understands technology and is trying to adapt finance or other ways have i you answer that question no no you need to understand the core so i was just speaking to a fintech lender yesterday and it, he's backed by the top retailer his uh, Uh, net interest income is five hundred. He's a BNPL player. His net interest income is five uh, hundred crores. His NPAs are fifteen hundred crores. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was thinking, where what are you on, right? Uh, so you need to understand the product. Technology is a commodity in some sense, right? Uh, technology is not rocket science. I can guarantee you that. Stalin is on Salesforce, right? One of the best hyperscaler platform in the world. So when we also look at technology, you can basically get the technology done, and you can be the last player in, and yet be very large in uh, uh, in in basically if you understand the business fundamentals right. Uh, but you need to scale with speed. That is very 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 important. Uh, to your first initial question, that difference between uh, uh, like an Amazon and a DMart, okay. Amazon focused on value plus convenience. Dmart is focused on value only. If Dmart can focus on value plus convenience, then you will have an even larger story in Dmart, right? In retail, Walmart also focused only on value, but larger wealth was created on value plus convenience, where you got the lowest price yet you got at a very convenient uh, district. So, if companies who can merge these things. uh they will create uh, like more value but yes what was the second question i'm so sorry because we are mixing up so many questions <laughs> no you answered the first que- uh, first question which i asked about technology ana chahiye ya uh, yeah yeah product yes of course uh, you need to so know the product the first so, question was ki how do you evaluate the pivot uh, companies making that pivot see i'll tell you there are so many companies right now who are trying to make that pivot right uh would you call uh this like think about it apollo hospital right it has pivoted to apollo 24 7 uh, that is where larger market cap no no advice no recommendation uh nothing but you need to see how they are journey just saying that we have come into technology doesn't mean anything right uh it is how what are they solving for what is the profit pool that you are going to solve for and these are very initial stages once uh they get more and more clarity i'm telling you we are in a 42 km marathon we have reached 1 km and they are all trying to say that this guy will win this guy will win we don't know yet but as the marathon progresses the clarity you see one thing is for sure india's profit pool of all india nifty 500 companies 6 and a half lakh crores as of last year this number is going to move to 17 lakh crores in next Ten years, right? With that eleven, twelve percent CAGR, that means eleven and a half lakh crores of incremental new profit addition will happen. Now we have to see who are the players that will get this eleven and a half lakh crores of incremental addition. Once we get that, we just have to bet pick. Who are the players who will consistently grow two, three times faster than the GDP? And once we have market opportunity, market leadership, good management, and a margin of safety, then. these four ends then we should go big on these opportunities 
that's a very very clever answer and i'm going to take uh, what problem they are solving and what proof uh, what profit pool they are aiming for as the takeaway from that particular answer okay so we'll quickly uh, you know take uh, comments from you on traditional valuation matrices like pe price to book you know all of that because at this point in time my listeners and our viewers and investors they would have noted that it's i mean there some companies have a three digit kind of pe two digit kind of price to book which you know a lot of uh, times we would have not seen earlier what do you think of these traditional matrices amit first and then neel uh, can take it see if your growth rate is less than your cost of capital then your cost of capital is 12% okay then pe is a perfect way of valuing stocks if your growth rate is higher than the cost of capital for a very long period of time p will not work it is p will work but p of the future you'll have to see p what what the profit will be 5 7 years from today and then what will be the p but p will broadly work but better is the uh, uh, how much cash they generate how much they reinvest at what roi so i'll get give you an example if nifty 500 p is 35 p right now okay roe is 15% okay of nifty 500 and if a company and the growth rate is 12 13% of nifty 500 if a company has 25% growth rate roe is 25% for next 10 years and you have you have basically and p is 50 times it is cheap because in 4 years the p of this company will be way cheaper than nifty 500 p so p is important valuations are important but the magnitude uh, when like after 3 years what will it be and where will nifty be and what will be the roe and that is how markets will determine valuation uh, quickly neel your take on uh, traditional valuation matrices matrices so see uh, i definitely think valuation is very very important it's valuation is the basic point where we start everything from but uh, there is a difference right so like our half of our book is special situation so half of me is value investor half of me is a technology guy so i understand valuation how to look at the technology valuation it will be differently so as you said some of these companies probably trade at let's say 100 times earnings but what is their actual earnings do we know that uh, for example let's take any new uh, saas company or any e-commerce company what they are doing is that their actual steady core earnings are very high so if they were to not focus on growth and if they were to say okay let's stop trying to grow at 50% and let's kind of calm down and grow 15% like a normal business you will find a lot of these businesses have a huge jump in ebitda margins because what is happening there is a lot of core profitability but they are spending they are spending it all for growth they are not interested to show that The, you know what their actual earnings are right now they are interested in gaining market share you know they are wanting to become bigger and bigger and bigger and then they want to normalize so think of google how they did it think of uh, you know youtube how they are trying to do it first scale and know that they are very very profitable at the core and when they want to normalize a business then suddenly the uh, you know the profitability will come on its own so we are very very clear as to how to look at a value investment we are very very clear as to how to look at a tech investment the, so for example in the saas business you know it's like a if you have a sticky customer right if the customer is going to stick with you for let's say 5 or 6 years you can predict very easily predict what the lifetime earnings you are going to get from that customer and if on average a customer is going to likely to stick with you for let's say 5 years you can spend that entire money into if you can spend an entire money and get you know kind of acquire five more customers so these guys are not in the game of printing a big eps for you today they will do it later the game right now is to take all that one customer's income and spend it so we have to look at metrics like ltv to cac right and if you see the gross margins if the gross margins are 75% 80% then these are actually very very profitable businesses they are actually not loss making business they are actually not a 100 pe business if they normalize their actual valuations will come down to a much sensible level but the game here is to grow at 30% 40% 50% revenue and do this later rationalize the business later so we generally wear two hats one of in our special situation book we want to wear a hat of a value investor and in the tech in a uh, side of the business we we want to look at things like this 
where there is a lot of core profitability but we know that the company is going to rationalize later right now the game is to gain market share right right neil that's a very very interesting take on valuation and my urge to investors is please don't follow that blindly and understand the business you know neil understands it and hence uh, can uh, have some uh, edge in choosing company so we are running out of time and i've got the buzzer from my team already so the last question that i'll ask to both of you is private markets versus public markets this debate is endless and it has taken up much more steam in the recent years quick comments on that before we conclude amit and then neil oh it's the same you have to i don't opportunities see opportunities in public no, and private opportunities are very large in both markets so it's for uh, both investors uh, uh, like nsc's private example right <laughs> but still i like that business and there are so many hyperscalers out there so but opportunities are there both in public and private markets no doubt about that if you would have say us market i'll say opportunities are like 10 30 40% more because of the innovation drives and the way they scale up the business right they go for global scale in 4 5 years that is one differentiation that i find uh, that's the only differentiation that is there but private and public i would say uh, valuation in private are crazy uh, uh, that's the one difference right neil quickly from you so i i think that uh, startups and private investments are very very important they have become a very important asset class which we cannot ignore so we at uh, nijen capital are now we have our own startup platform so where we want to identify businesses which are not currently available in the stock market for us to invest but we are getting the chance to invest in them in the private sector so in the unlisted sector so you know we 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 have identified this and we like enabling our clients to invest in this kind of sector they very very important right thank you uh, so i'll just quickly summarize with a very interesting discussion on new age versus old age companies and management styles obviously we couldn't have covered everything but i hope uh, we added some interesting insights uh, so quick takeaways tech is okay. tech is only to the extent of enabler the product the core has to be solid and you have to understand that more for tech to help you valuation can be contextual and valuation has to be looked understood with uh, what the company is trying to do now and what is the kind of acquisition customer acquisition that they're trying to do uh, businesses will from time to time evolve and the ones that keep pace uh, with the new ways of reaching the customers will probably uh, keep doing well so thank you amit thank you neil uh, thank you to the audience thank you to my team